Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of profits. Today, joined by Brett of Anomyces. And you guys asked for more lambic videos. We give so you more lambic. We lambic. give you more lambic. Yeah. Uh, we're diving into the cellar to crack something very fresh because we have another bottle of this to see how it ages. But this is from Trifontainen, and this was part of their huge uh, uh, sherry pack they did uh, a few months ago. And this is the Ode Göse Getuft. I think that's how you pronounce it. So what they did is that they went to a, uh, a one of their uh, com the companies like a cooperage or something where they buy uh, cherry barrels from. It says a, it's a local Jerez cooperage. They got some barrels that they were going to use for uh, for uh, Sen and Sen variants, mm -hmm. but they smelled like the typical aged old cherry barrels. But some of them had like peaty characteristic, like peated smoke. And then they've aged a few different lambics in these barrels uh, that they wanted to use for uh, for uh, for for Seine Frontera. But because of the peaty smoke, they thought even though it was delicate, it should be a different beer because it doesn't really encompass the flavors you want from Seine. And Seine Frontera, it was also Pitlin 2 we had, but that's the only lambic I think I've ever given 100. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's really cool. As they say here, um, you know, it's uh, it's a they got a mix of Pedro Jimenez, Amontillado, and uh, what was the, Oloroso Oloroso, barrels. Yeah. Uh, so a huge mix, and this blend here is mostly from Oloroso barrels of of these uh, peat barrels that smell like peat. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool. So a Gerza, old Gerza, uh, also the strongest old Gerza I've ever had. This is ten point six percent. What is it? Holy this shit. This is crazy. It must have picked up a lot of booze from the barrel. Yeah, or maybe uh, Driftfontaine is just making stronger gooses now. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're just like, because they've become, uh, you know, it's a bigger brewery now. Mm. They m are maybe playing around more with the, because they're also brewing the Lambic themselves now. They're not just blending. Yeah. So they can play around with producing worts that are stronger to make different beers and like make gooses the way wild beer producers in the States do, where they play mm. with all kinds of things. Yeah. It's not just blending because they can brew themselves. So I think that might be part of it. Uh, it's 60%, uh, let's see, uh, barley malt, 40% raw wheat, old hops, everything else that you want in, yeah. in classic gruza. But again, it's just like that whopping 10.6%. It says it's best before the 26th of October, 2040. <laughs> yeah. And this was bottled on the 14th of uh, April, 2020. Yeah. So still a fairly young Lambic. But yeah, this will be interesting to try. Yeah. Pour is pretty much what you expect from a Goose. Very hazy, this one, actually. The only sherry barrel-aged Goose I've had is Sen. Me too. So, <laughs> so, but, but that one also had a deeper color. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was a bit darker. Yeah, so it has that like deep, kind of, almost like toasty, uh, orangey kind of, yeah, call it toasty orange. It's yeah. a terrible but <laughs> color description, it's orangey, but it's like... Orangey, copper-esque. Yeah. Yeah, it's just darker. Yeah, and then a, a white head. But yeah, since the first pour, there was like sediment coming out. So it's I guess it's not, even though it's been just standing like this. Mm. Or, I don't know. I don't use the soil on the side, but I don't have the ability to do that. But still, yeah. a lot of sediment in suspension. But yeah, let's check out the aroma on it. And to me, it smells like a gruza. It yeah, does, I don't not, smell any smoke. You know, not smoke. I'm I was looking for the smoke. Like yeah, me too. But they say it's a delicate note. I'm definitely smelling cherry. Like it's yeah. got that like dry sherry yeah. aroma, like I that see dry that almost, sherry. Almost like um, like dried plums of you know. Do you know what? Uh, there I got it. There is a slight interesting. It's almost like a smoky funk. Yeah, but also like just. I, I wouldn't say it's like smoky. It's not, but it's, it's, it's reminiscent like a, of it. Yeah, it's more, more, maybe more like a slightly. It's not like the same as like charred wood. But it has no, kind of a similar, slightly... Yeah, yeah. It's like a really uh, old woody thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost like a funky smokiness. I can see something like... But maybe it's more in the taste. On like... Uh, think of like uh, heading I'm down getting... to a basement where there's like old wood that has been... Peated stuff. Yeah, peated or slightly smoked many years ago. Yeah, like yeah. It, it doesn't... Because it doesn't have that super intense... But it's super light. I'm amazed yeah, I, that I, they decided... I just decided, got a bit of it now. I'm, I'm amazed that they picked up on it and decided yeah. not to use it for Sen because, like, I don't think you would have tasted it in the blend. But I think then, again, doing a 3 agruza with these barrels, 
makes sense because if you want to try and make that character but it's it's that's so weird i didn't pick it up at all no but it's you're starting to get it more as it's the glass yeah but it's super light yeah it's just a nuance and then of course like the classic like almost dried apricot if you hold your nose a little bit further from the glass you smell more i was just about to say i think it's maybe a more volatile aroma when 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 you stick your nose in like into the glass it's much more fruity and like classic goose when you smell it a bit from a distance it's also like slightly more minerally yeah, like this yeah, yeah, almost for like sure. minerally peaty. Almost like when you have scotch. Yeah. And it, there's definitely like that minerality to it. Yeah. And then dry Sherry Vineyard's character. But loads of stone fruit uh, on this one too. Like yeah. it has that like, it's uh, often the uh, Dreyfontaine and Scruises have huge amounts of like dried stone fruit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah loads of dried that. apricot and yeah. plums and almost like, yeah. Man, it's so subtle. I love that though. Like. Yeah. It's almost reminding me of when uh, Cantillon did their uh, Rauchlambic, which was, it was also a smoke that was as yeah. subtle as this, where I was like disappointed because I, I hoped, since they called it Rauchlambic, that it would be like totally in your face. Yeah. But that was also, you know, if it was a, as a soft, soft flavor like this, I wouldn't notice it because it was on draft and there was many other beers involved. Yeah. yeah. Like it's something where you needed a bottle to sit with, I think, to notice it more. But yeah, it smells very nice. Yeah. Let's try it. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, there is, there it yeah. is. Mm. And it's definitely more on the flavor. And you also sense instantly that it's a different kind of mm. wood of yeah. like barrel, like sensation, also like the texture of it. And, but also like just the, the flavor, interesting thing though, like, even though I think maybe that's also, I don't know if that's just, I don't know how they gauge this, but it almost seems like the reason why this beer has such a high gravity could be to combat some of that dryness. Cause you can feel that it's a really old dry mm. barrel flavor. Like there is that really, yeah. really old wood. Yeah, and maybe tannic. you need, and maybe you need a lot of sweetness or just a strong base beer to handle that kind yeah. of wood. Even though, you know, Goose is usually lower ABV because it yeah. doesn't necessarily drink like a crazy high ABV. Not beer. at all. I wouldn't I would never have guessed. Guess this is ten percent. No, never I've I would would have guessed like seven percent. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as mm. you say, it has like this old, slightly peaty, smoky. peaty uh, like old basement kind of yeah. character. Also, just like an old peaty, almost like driftwood, or uh, it's like we talked about this before as well, like ropes of like old wooden yeah. ships. Yeah. Like if you ever go to like this classic sailboat, like that kind of smell, that tarry old woody whatever. It's almost like a funk like that. Or that's like in there. walk into a um, what's it called? Um, Aft. Like yeah, an old, a ship wharf, yeah, an old ship wharf. Like the, an old wharf with old wooden ships. Or shipyard. Yeah, shipyard. Um, it, it's kind of, it's a bit like that, but but it also has like really fresh, like acidic uh, apricot yeah. and almost like a lemon. Yes, sort. lemon and that apricot and, and like there is definitely also some fluffy wheatiness to it. And one of the big things like this is not crazy sour. This is crazy no. well balanced. And that's like uh, one of the reasons why I think a lot of people, like when they get the thing is, like, when they've tasted enough, like, sour beers, they will start to appreciate... Like, a lot of... Uh, start to appreciate Lambic. The thing is, with a lot of people, I think, that don't like Lambic is because they start with it, they it's slightly sour, at least if they're drinking Gruza. It's, you know, it is sour, but it's not, like, crazy. And then they're like, oh, they're off by the sourness. And then they go to all the crazy fruity stuff, mm. and then they maybe get more accustomed to it, and then they go back and it's like, okay, Gruza is actually not that sour. Mm. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, this is a very, very cool take on a goose. It'll be interesting to see how this develops with the, the unique barrel character. Yeah, um, because I think just... it will develop quite, quite a bit, to be honest. And I yeah. think the barrel will probably get more and more present. Yeah, and we got two variants of this. So we got this, which is blend 61. Mm-hmm. And then we also got 62, which is a little lower in strength. Okay. And I, I can't remember if it's different barrels or whatever, but you got two of this one. But this is dangerous because of this ABV. Yeah, you yeah. drink it way too fast yeah, yeah. for what is it? Almost 11%. It's yeah. crazy for a Lambic. Uh, it is. But yeah, as it is young right now, it's really, really good. Yeah, but uh, you also sense that it's young. You know, yeah. there is that. There's not that deep complex funk. It's more fresh and fruity and no. vibrant. Also because like just Michael and I had a golden, uh, no, sorry, not golden, a platinum blend uh, a few weeks ago. And that had had much like much deeper like funky old characters to it. You, you sense that beer was like two or three years older than this. Um, there is a touch of sweetness to this too, almost like candied apricot. But I think you know that's in part because it's a stronger beer. But it's, it's not like crazy distinguishable because of the complexity of funk and, and, and like 
Sourness. It just has so much like light tartness. Yeah, acidity and tartness and, and dryness from the barrel and yeah. whatever to you know dry it out and yeah, you don't think about you know booze at all. There's nothing that's boozy or like heavy heavy to drink. So yeah. I'm thinking ninety three as yeah. it is right now. I think this will be developing into something very interesting because of the the the, uh, the barrels they use for this yeah. and just like the just the fact that it's slightly peated in, yeah. in flavor profile even though it's I don't know why. it must just be a weird nuance from the barrels combined with punk I'd mm. imagine that could be part of it too some of the wild yeast doing that I'm yeah. not sure but it's it's pretty damn cool hopefully this will be a producer of lambic I'll be visiting this summer because I'm gonna be making a stop through Belgium when I'm I going hope to that France. for you <laughs> I've already told my girlfriend if we're going to Belgium on holiday I or can. France, young and France and we need and to visit some some lambic producers yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, awesome stuff. If you guys were uh, lucky enough to get some of the uh, Trifontaine Eau de Guse Getuft blend number 61, let us know what you thought of it. This will be fun to see how this develops. And yeah, we'll be cracking more Lampic. Uh, but again, the reason why we don't crack it is because it's good to age. <laughs> it, it is just better, better with the age, especially yeah. Guse. Yeah, and I don't have loads of old Lampic sitting in the cellar mm. at the moment. So just take the Vigna one we had, which was just awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys had this, let us know. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, ring the bell for future notifications about videos, and we're going to fly cheers. Cheers. And see you guys in another video.